this last example, we want to transform the sine function with one more different type of transformation. This time, I'm going to be multiplying theta by 2 before actually evaluating my sine function. So just like before, we want to uh, graph our parent function, which I've already done, and uh, we want to make a table to make what this new function looks like. So uh, why don't I actually um, fill out my table? Okay, now that I have my, my table, uh, I'm ready to start evaluating. So let's take negative 2 pi and plug it in for uh, sine of 2 theta. Uh, so I'm going to take y equals the sine of 2 times negative 2 pi, which is going to be y equals the sine of negative 4 pi. And let's draw a little unit circle up here to kind of help me visualize this. So uh, negative 4 pi will be going in the clockwise direction, and I'll count by pi. So negative 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Y value is 0, so that's going to be 0. Uh, okay, let's do uh, the next one. We're going to take uh, negative 3 pi over 2 and figure out what that's equal to. So two, y equals sine of 2 times 3 pi over 2, and that's going to be, uh, or negative 3 pi over 2, and that's going to be the same thing as sine of negative 3 pi. We'll go to the unit circle. I'm going to go negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi. Y value there is 0. Uh, and keep going. I'm going to get, I'm going to plug in negative pi. So I want the sine of 2 times negative pi, which is negative 2 pi. And if I follow my unit circle, and that's negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, hey, that's also 0. And there's kind of a pattern going on here, lots of zeros. Actually, if I plug all of these things in, I'm going to get 0. Well, that doesn't seem to make sense, because clearly this sine curve, or well, maybe, maybe it's just a flat line, but that sounds a little suspicious to me. It seems kind of weird that like this would just become a straight line just because I've doubled my angle. So something's missing from this picture. And really what I need is I just need to figure out like what's going on uh, in this area here. What's happening between negative 2 pi and negative 3 pi over 2? It would be great if I could find out. So what I basically need to do is I need, I need more x values. Uh, so then what I'm going to do is, uh, let's let's actually get rid of, I don't need this right here. So I'm going to erase my table completely here. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Let's make this a nice big eraser. And so uh, basically I know that um, I have all these values tracked from my previous table. So I've got all my negative 2 pi and 0, negative 3 pi over 2 and 0. Let's find a little bit about what happens in between some of these values. So let's, let's take a look at, I'm interested now in uh, negative pi over 4. And this would be negative 3 pi over 4. I'm interested in what's happening there. Uh, same thing with, uh, on the positive side, pi over 4, and then 3 pi over 4. Let's figure out what's going on in between these zeros and see if we can't make sense of what this, this shape actually looks like. OK, so uh, now let's fill out a new graph. I'm still going to keep 0 in the center, and I know that's 0. Um, and now let's go in intervals of pi over 4. So negative pi over 4 negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4, and then negative pi. And then same thing the other direction, positive pi over 4, uh, positive pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. Okay, so uh, now let's actually plug in these values into my table. And I guess I, I do know that negative pi is 0 based upon what I learned before. I know that negative pi over 2 is 0. I know that positive pi over 2 is 0, and I know that positive uh, pi, there it is, is also 0. So let's just fill out these, these missing values here. Um, so let's go back over to where I was plugging stuff in, and let's see what happens here. OK, so I want sine of 2 times, let's start with negative 3 pi over 4. All right, and that's going to be 2 times negative 3 pi over 4, which is equal to negative 3 pi over 2. Let's go to my unit circle and trace where that is. So negative pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, that's positive 1. All right, and uh, let's do the same thing with pi over 4. OK, so I plug in negative pi over 4. I want 2 times negative pi over 4, and that's going to be negative pi over 2. And using my unit circle, uh, if I go backwards, pi over 2, the y value there is negative 1. 
So this is now looking like I have some, some pieces in here. And let's see if we can't just develop the pattern um, by plugging in these values from the table onto the graph. So when theta is negative 3 pi over 4, that's a negative 3 pi over 4, we have a y value of, uh, oops, of positive 1. And then I go back down to 0. When I have negative pi over 4, I have negative 1. And then uh, 0, 0. And so I'm, I'm thinking that the next point will be going up. So if I'm following my pattern, this should go up to 1. And you can verify that form yourself. Then I come back down to 0. And then I go back down to a negative 1 at 3 pi over 4 and back up to pi. And so it's going to look something like this. So this is what my new graph looks like. Uh, it's a lot like the original sine wave, but I've compressed this thing in here. I've created a, a, a change in the, uh, uh, the stretchiness of this graph. So I haven't stretched it vertically, I've actually compressed it uh, horizontally. So this has a horizontal compression. And the reason why that is, is because of this two right here. When I'm doubling theta, I'm actually uh, inverting what that multiplication does, and I'm going to be compressing my x values by a factor of 2. So the domain is going to be the same. This is going to continue to go on in both directions, from negative infinity to infinity. My range still same max and min, from negative 1 to 1. My period, now this is where things have changed. If I take a look at the distance from 1 crest to 1 crest, Going from negative 3 pi over 4 to pi over 4, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 pi's over 4. My period is now just pi. Interesting. So when I had nothing in front of that, that theta, the period was 2 pi. So normally, my period is 2 pi. But when I have this doubling, or this times 2, uh, in this example here, that's when this is just theta. Normally, if it's just theta, it's 2 pi. But when I have a, a, a change, a transformation of a 2 pi, or rather 2 theta, my period becomes just pi. There's, so there's actually this uh, inverse relationship between what the value is in front of theta and then what the actual period is. So what I've done here is I'm actually dividing this 2 pi by whatever uh, factor I multiply theta by. We could say in general, that the period equals 2 pi over, we call this the b value. And we'll see some more examples of that moving forward. Uh, but basically the big takeaway here is when I multiply uh, theta by some value greater than one, I'm going to compress the period. And um, similarly, if I were to multiply this by like a half, I would in fact stretch this out and uh, expand the period. The amplitude is the same thing. It's going from the midline of zero up to one uh, so the amplitude is going to be 1 here. So this is probably one of the trickier uh, transformations to figure out because I'm kind of doing this opposite thing. But the more and more you get practice with it, I think the more and more will make sense. So hopefully that uh, was helpful to you. And now you've seen four um, big transformations for the sine curve.